It's time for this week's episode of Brandon Sports Talk, featuring in-depth interviews from those who are trending in the world of athletics. And now, here's the host of Brandon Sports Talk, Brandon Pate. Welcome back to Brandon Sports Talk. In today's episode, I have the privilege to interview the Lewisburg assistant women's basketball coach, Courtney Bro. How are you doing today? I'm doing good, Brandon. How are you? I'm doing good. Can you talk about, of course, how you got started in college coaching? Uh, yeah, so um, I just had a couple friends who um, knew I wanted to get into it. And one of them, he had uh, his old boss, she had a friend who was taking a job and they kind of connected us together and he was looking for an assistant here at Lewisburg. And I mean, it all kind of happened really fast, but here I am and I'm really enjoying my time here so far. Have you coached anywhere else besides, of course, Lewisburg? Um, yes. Yeah, so I was uh, an assistant coach at some um, uh, high schools down in Virginia, a um, couple public schools, a couple private schools. Uh, so most of my coaching has been at high school level and, you know, at basketball camps. What was that transition like for you to go from a high school coach to, of course, a college coach? Um, the transition was, it was great. I mean, it's still something that I'm working on, I would say, uh, especially with like learning all the rules in terms of uh, recruiting and that sort of stuff. But um, I'd say the transition so far has been pretty smooth. My boss, Jason, uh, Coach Rasnick, he's awesome. He's done a really good job of helping me kind of figure out my way and giving me work to do and just keeping me busy and helping me learn. So I've really enjoyed it so far and the transition's been great. Can you talk about, of course, what you plan to accomplish at Lewisburg? Um, so what I would like to accomplish at Lewisburg personally would, you know, just be finding, helping build the program with Coach Raz and um, finding that great kid that we're looking for, um, you know, high academic, but also great on the basketball court. Um, we keep telling our kids, you know, the more, the more in the classroom that you are, the better kind of coaches we can get in here and hopefully help get them recruited to the level that they would like to go to and, you know, ultimately bring home a championship. I think that's on everyone's uh, list of things to do, but um, yeah, at the end of the day, I just, you know, want to make a difference here. So. Can you talk about, of course, the recruitment process for Lewisburg and what that's like for the women's basketball program? Um, sure. So the recruitment process, uh, typically once we find a kid that we like, um, we'll reach out to them. Uh, nowadays you can track them all over social media. That's like the thing these days, uh, wasn't as big when I was coming up, but, um, yeah, so social media, we look on there, see if they're being looked at by any other schools. Um, of course we see what their academics are and see if that's something that we can work with in terms of, uh, giving them academic money as well as athletic money. And then, um, yeah, we just start to form a relationship with them and go to some games. And hopefully at the end of the day that Lewisburg is where they would like to be. And yeah, that's basically how it goes. Can you talk about, of course, how you have helped the women's basketball program at Lewisburg? Um, honestly, I can't say that I personally have done too much. Um, we, Jason and I, were a really good team. We balance ideas off of each other and work together to figure out what the girls need. And um, I think the girls have done a pretty good job of being coachable. And we've thrown a lot at them this season, especially with COVID and, you know, not being able to run practice as much as um, like how we typically would. So uh, I really think they've done a good job of adjusting and the school's done a great job of, you know, letting us know that they're not going to be shutting things down exactly if one person were to catch COVID. So it's given us some room to work with, but we've also done a good job of maintaining, you know, uh, the rules and holding the girls to that standard of wearing their masks and uh, social distancing and stuff. So can you um, talk about, can you talk about, of course, like with COVID happening right when you got the job, how was that mm -hmm. transition like as normal coaches, like if you were to have got the job last year, you would have had a more easier, smooth transition. Oh, absolutely. So 
I, I mean, I'm not gonna lie for me, it was very difficult. I was, I just took this job. I was ready to just jump right in, start recruiting and like doing everything that I thought I should be doing. And um, then COVID hit and it's like, we got back from our, the championship conference championship and the kids went home from spring break. They never came back. So we weren't doing any, you know, postseason workouts or anything like that. Um, high schools weren't playing. It was just, it was really hard actually to just adjust to that because um, we had to change our way of thinking, change how we were recruiting and um, change how we were essentially like helping our players get better. You know, everything was kind of on them and uh, they had to take a lot more responsibility, but um, I don't know. I think, I think we adjusted fairly well. I mean, we got some great kids in this year, so. Can you talk about, of course, how you adapt it in your recruitment process and um, with COVID and stuff? Sure. So uh, I actually live on campus. Um, so I, I'm also the community director and um, the housing coordinator here at Lewisburg. So I live here um, with us not being able to have people on campus. I had to sort of transition to doing virtual tours. So, um, you know, we had an iPad and me and I was just walking around campus, just trying to give the kids as best of a Lewisburg feel as I could. Um, you know, Jason did a good job of, you know, telling me if he'd reached out to any kids because he couldn't be here at the time because it was essential staff only. Um, so then it was my job to go find those kids and see if they want to go on a virtual tour and just get to know them. And, you know, I think we, uh, I think we changed, we adapted fairly well in terms of uh, how we were getting kids on campus and showing them the Lewisburg um, college campus. So, yeah. What does an official visit look like for prospective student athletes at Lewisburg? Uh, so typically what we'll do is, you know, we'll have them and their families on campus, um, show them around. They'll have a meeting with admissions, um, kind of discuss the financial side of everything. And then um, we'll take them on a tour. Uh, they might have a meal in the dining hall. Um, and then hopefully they're either watching a game or uh, staying for a practice just to see how, you know, things are run over in the sports side. Um, and so we'd like to have it where a student would take them around maybe to a class, show them, you know, what di the different classes they could take or the class sizes and stuff like that. But um, obviously with COVID, it's a little different. So um, we really haven't had very many official visits so far uh, this year, but um, we're hoping we can get some kids on campus for that. Of course, with the official visit, do they get to try on the Lewisburg uh, navy blue uniforms? Um, well, actually, since I've been here, we have not had an official visit, so I'm not even sure how it would it would go. But I'm sure that Coach Raz would have him get in a jersey. Um, he loves like setting up the backdrop and taking pictures. We did a photo shoot and a video shoot for our kids. So um, I'm sure that they would definitely be sporting some Lewisburg wear uh, gear if they were here on an official visit. <laughs> Can you talk about, of course, the teams that are in your conference? Uh, yeah, sure. So um, Let's see. So our conference is pretty athletic. Um, we've got a lot of teams who love to push the ball. So when we play those teams, I mean, I'm watching it. And it's just like watching a track meet. You know, we've got possession, 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 like teams are just up and down on defense and offense. Um, I think we play better to that style because our goal is to just score as many points as possible. Um, Coach Raz looks to score over 80 points every game. So, I mean, that in terms of how our competition plays works in favor for us. Once they start slowing the ball down and we're having to run half court sets, I would say that's where we struggle a little bit more. But um, yeah, I think everyone in our conference is, you know, competitive and anyone could win any night and people are always getting new players in. So um, I think I think our conference is a tough conference to play in each night. Who are some of those teams that are, are in your conference? Uh, so teams that are in conference, you've got uh, Wake Tech. Um, they're actually not playing this season because of COVID, but they were the uh, champions this past this past year. Um, we lost to them in the conference championship. Um, there's USC Sakahatchee, um, Brian and Stratton, Cape Fear, uh, Catawba Valley, Brunswick. Um, 
I'm sure I'm forgetting someone just because, you know, there's so many schools, but uh, yeah, those are, those are a lot of the top schools that we play. What advice would you have upcoming high school athletes looking to play college women's basketball? Um, really? I mean, just be careful what you're putting on social media, you know? Um, I know a lot of kids like to, you know, talk their talk on social media, but that that is things that we uh, pay attention to. And, um, you know, you don't want to say something or do something that could come back and bite you in the tail a little bit later on. So I would just recommend watching what you do on social media, um, playing hard, start recruiting early, you know, put, putting your name out there. And um, I mean, it, it doesn't hurt to reach out too early, you know, so yeah, I just that's what I would say. What advice would you have upcoming college coaches looking to get started just like how you did? Um, I would say networking is really important. Um, and also uh, being coachable, you know, like being as coachable as you would want your kids to be, not coming in thinking that you know everything and not being open to another style of basketball. You know, basketball is always changing and that's one of the reasons I love it. Um, a lot of people, you know, take it different ways and I think that's important to just, you know, the way you see something, someone else is not going to see it that same way. So um, just being open-minded and wanting to learn and to get better, you know, so. That's great advice. Where can my listeners find, of course, the women's basketball program at, on social media along with you? Um, so you can follow us on Snapchat, Twitter, we've got TikTok, um, Instagram, everything is at lckanes underscore WBB. And then for our games this season, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel at Lewisburg College to catch all of our games. Thank you again for your interview, Courtney, and best of luck in this upcoming Absolutely. season. Thank you so much, Brandon. It's been nice talking to you. You can find Brandon Sports Talk on Facebook at Brandon Sports Talk, Instagram at Brandon Sports Talk, Twitter at Talk underscore Brandon, and you can find me on YouTube at Brandon Sports Talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you again, Coach Courtney, for your interview, and best of luck. Thank you, Brandon. See you soon. You've been watching Brandon Sports Talk. Please feel free to like, share, and subscribe to Brandon Sports Talk on social media and on YouTube.